major hurdle to allowing attorneys and litigants to participate in hearings remotely is how to handle exhibits. Zoom solves this problem with screen sharing. Screen sharing does exactly what its name suggests. It allows a user to share their screen in real time. It also allows others to annotate those exhibits during the course of the trial. This tutorial will show you how to use screen sharing. First, I will walk you through the settings to make sure that you have screen sharing enabled. Second, I will show you how to use screen sharing inside a Zoom meeting. As mentioned, the first thing you want to do is to enable screen sharing in your settings. To do this, go into your Zoom account and click on Settings. Next, you'll want to click on In Meeting Basic. You'll need to scroll down a little bit until you get to Screen Sharing. You want to make sure that this is toggled on and you'll know that it's on when it's blue. You will next need to decide who can share, whether that's host only or all participants. In our case, we want all participants. Next, you will need to decide who can share content when someone else is sharing. Once again, I'm going to leave that as all participants. The next setting is Disable Desktop. You want to make sure that this is not clicked on. The next setting is Annotation. This allows participants to use annotation tools to add information to shared screens. You'll want to make sure that's toggled on. The next setting is Whiteboard. Once again, you'll want to make sure that Whiteboard is enabled and also click on Auto Save Whiteboard Content when sharing is stopped. The final setting that you need to consider is remote control. During screen sharing, the person who is sharing can allow others to control the shared content. Once again, it's really important that that is toggled on. Now that you have the appropriate settings enabled and before you start the hearing, make sure that you've exchanged exhibits beforehand with counsel as well as provide the court with a copy. It is also helpful to have these exhibits open and running in the background of your computer before you start the hearing. This will make handling exhibits during the course of the hearing much easier. At this point, I'm going to assume that you have joined the hearing via Zoom and are ready to present exhibits either to the witness or the court. To do that, you're going to want to bring your cursor to the bottom of the screen and that's going to activate a toolbar. In the middle of the toolbar is an icon that says Screen Share. You're going to want to click on that. That's going to open up a window that has three tabs across the top, Basic, Advanced, and Files. Let's start with the top left, Desktop. The Desktop is everything that you have up and running on your desktop. You want to be very careful before you choose this as an option because you may have some things in the background that others will see. So be very careful before you display your desktop. If I had two monitors running, you would see Desktop 1 and then another option as Desktop 2. Next, we have Whiteboard. Just like you would see in court, a whiteboard allows you to draw and do other annotations. You can also print this out as a JPEG and submit that into evidence. The next two involve your iPhone or iPad. You can connect those via AirPlay or via cable. If you have an app like TrialPad, this is a great way to display exhibits. The file, final items that I have all here are uh, programs that I have running in the background. I have ScreenFlow, uh, I have some Safari tabs, and I have a PDF running. The difference between this and the desktop is it only shows that application. It doesn't show anything else. For instance, if I wanted to show a PDF, I would click on it and then click Share. Now, everybody can see this exhibit. I can scroll down. I am able to annotate by coming up to the top. Uh, that will engage a toolbar, and you can see this annotation tool. Uh, that allows me to change the mouse, to add text if I wanted to add text to it. I can do drawings. I can do an arrow. I can do a stamp. I can use a spotlight. This is like a laser here, so if I wanted to show you some things, I can do an eraser, I can format, I can undo, and I can redo, and then I can clear all of my drawings that were on there. 
to stop this, I click on the stop share icon. Next, I want to show you some of the other tabs on the share screen window. The next one would be advanced. Here you'll see three options. The first is to show a portion of your screen. The next is to share music from your computer. And the final one is to show content from a second camera. The one that I think you'll find the most useful is portion of your screen. In essence, this allows you to do a call out of a document. Let me show you how that works. First, you're going to want to open the document. So let's go back to basic and we're going to click on this PDF that I have. And I'm going to click on share. Now I want to pause the sharing. So go up here and click on pause. And now I'm going to click on new share. Go back to your advanced tab and click on portion of the screen and then come down and click on share. This is going to show you an orange box. So what you want to do is if I want to just have this one bullet point called out, I would move and drag this orange box to show the area that I want highlighted. Once I'm ready to do that, I click on resume share. And what that's going to do is that's going to create a call out on the other person's screen. Let me now show you what this looks like from another user screen. I've joined the meeting via my iPad and I'm going to show you what the other participants see when there's a call out. Here you can see the original document and then here is the call out. Also under the advanced tab is the ability to share music or some other recording from your computer. For instance, you want to play a voicemail that has been recorded and saved. Before you do that, you want to make sure that you come down to the bottom of the screen here and click Share Computer Sound. If you were doing a video, you'd also want to click the box next to it that indicates Optimize Screen Share for Video Clip. When you go ahead and try to do this, you click Music or Computer Sound and click Share. If you're on a, com if you're on a Mac computer, you may get a pop-up window that looks like this that asks you to install the Zoom audio device. Go ahead and use your computer credentials and log in and click OK. When you do start playing a recording or music from your computer, you will see this notice at the top of your screen. The last tab that I want to show you is the Files tab. When you open it up, you'll see four options, Dropbox, Microsoft OneDrive, Google Drive, and Box. To access any of those accounts, you'll need to first click on it and then click on Share. Uh, this is going to ask you to connect to your Dropbox. You'll go ahead and click Connect. You'll need to authorize Zoom to access your Dropbox account. Complete your login information to sign in and click Allow. You'll now see all of your Dropbox files for you to access. The next thing I want to show you is how to use the remote control feature. This feature allows you to have someone else mark up a document that you are sharing. First, open up the document you want to show the witness. Next, click on the remote control and select the person you want to annotate the document. In this case, I'm going to click on Remote Control, and you'll see a drop down, and you'll see me where I'm listed as another individual on my personal account. At this point, I'm going to show you two screens. One is the attorney screen, and the other is the witnesses screen. The attorney has showed the document from this screen, and it's going to pass control over to the witness to annotate the document. The witness will see a notification at the top of the screen that they are controlling the attorney's screen. Next, the witness will need to click on View Options at the top of the screen and then click on Annotate at the bottom of the drop-down window. This will open up a toolbar with annotation options. Here you can see the various annotation options including check marks under the stamp icon, a drawing tool, and then Finally, an arrow with the name of the person 
marking up the document. The annotations appear on the other participants' screens almost instantaneously. I found that this feature works better when the person doing the annotations is working from a computer as compared to an iPad. To take back control, click on the remote control again and then click on abort control. On a Mac, the first time you use remote share, you may get a warning box that pops up that looks like this. You must grant Zoom permission to control the computer. To do that, click on Open System Preferences. Next, you will need to click the lock to grant access to Zoom. You'll be prompted to insert your passcode to the computer. Once that is done, click the checkbox next to Zoom. Now you're all set to have someone else control your screen to make annotations. A helpful tip to make things run more smoothly during a hearing is to use the pause feature when changing exhibits. Let me show you what that looks like. Open up the first document that you want to show. I'm going to click on this PDF expert document and click share. Now I want to get the next document ready for everybody to see. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here and I'm going to click on pause share. Everyone is going to continue to see this document that I have presented, but I'm now able to get the next one up and running. So I'm going to go back up here and click on new share. And now the next document that I want everybody to see is this preview of a Zoom meeting document. And I'm going to click on share here. I need to go up and click on resume share. And now everybody's going to see this new document that I have up. I find that to be very helpful. The final suggestion I have for you is to do a practice hearing before the actual hearing. This serves two purposes. First, you will feel more comfortable at the hearing once you've had a chance to practice showing exhibits on your computer. Second, you will have enabled all of the permissions during the practice session so you won't be fumbling around during the hearing. I hope you found this tutorial to be helpful.